Okay guys, I wanted to go over high power charging setups. I currently fly a Fusion 50, uh, it takes two 6 cell battery packs in series to uh, fly the baby. So in order to do that I need a lot of charging power unless I'm going to have, I'm going to be sitting around state and waiting forever. Now in the past I uh, have charged with the iCharger 310B which is a good charger. It does what I needed to do, parallel charging at 30 amps, had no problems. The power supplies that I used for this was, let me open my case up. This is our, these are the Hewlett Packard's um, DPS uh, 600 PBB um, wired in series with a Zener diode inside of them. So basically that means that this case here up on top is the floating case. The DC ground inside of it for electronics has been severed. And so the A, but it still retains the AC ground the same way as the bottom one does. If there ever shorts out the DC side, the Zener will let the, um, the, a, the DC side pass through the AC and they'll shut both units off. Uh, it's still, that way, the what that Zener diode lets to do is lets both units sit side by side like this and touch without shorting out. Um, that way, you can have them running both side by side in the case. Also, if something was to happen, the Zener diode pops. It passes the current onto the AC safely. Uh, and this unit here, the way I have it currently wired up, uh, this is just an old line case. Your TUX450 used to come in. I've got two switches. I got the Illuminate. That's the 12 volt switch. This is 24 volt switch. Uh, and other than actually think about these uh, two units, even though they put out lots of power, the fans are on at full speed all the time, so it is kind of noisy. The wife kind of doesn't like it sometimes, if you guys know what I'm talking about. Now, I got this new charger, which is the Cell Pro Power Lab 8, made by FMA. This thing is a beast. It'll put out 40 amps. Uh, there's guys online charging their homemade electric cars with these things. Uh, this will definitely do what you needed to do, but the problem is this pulls. When I had it uh, hooked up to my uh, charger, charging all six batteries on the FMA uh, um, charging, and it was pushing 40 amps out of here into the parallel charger, but it was pulling 45 amps out of these two power supplies. These power supplies are both rated at 47 amps. I don't really like pushing my power supplies to the limit, um, just because they were getting warm, even with both fans running as fast as they should be, and I just didn't feel really comfortable with that. Um, both of these uh, server or server power supplies only pull 8.6, they only pull like 16, 17 amps off of your regular um, household outlet, so not too bad. Um, so of course I had to upgrade the power supplies, uh, get a little more power. Well, for $26, I went to eBay. Yes, $26, that's shipped, $26, and I got two of these. This here is the DPS 1200 FBA. Now, both of these consume 9.9 .9 amps when they're running at full power. But together, these put out a maximum of 1,800 watts. And they put out about 70, I think it's like 75 amps max at that. Um, and my power supply will never use that. If it was only pulling 45 on the other one, and that was maxing my other power supplies out, 45 on these shouldn't be too heavy of a load for them, considering they can do 75. So the outlet should not ever reach that. Currently, they're both on both lights are on and as you can hear there is currently no load but the fans are running and they're running very quietly the only run uh, loud is when it gets about 110 to 130 degrees somewhere in that range I don't know exactly for sure but at that temperature what will happen is the fans will kick on and really start cooling the unit down till it shuts back down now as you can see here um, this one is the float basically the DC electronics inside this one is, has been separated from the case there are three ground wires and, your ground, and it's the actual ground board that you're separating from the circuitry board, like this board right here. This board right there is separated on the inside. There's three bolts that hold it to the chassis. One over here, one up in here, and one back here. Um, you basically, I used nylon washers and drilled out the holes and made sure not to leave any of the copper stuff inside of there. Um, this takes it where if something was happening to the DC board, it could not short out the case. This allows for what I got right here, both cases to touch and you're still getting 24 volts out with any problem. Now, this only bad side thing, bad thing about these, these units are nice and small too, by the way. They're very compact compared to the other ones. And they're, they still are a decent amount of weight. In order to get these two to come on, you have to use a 560 ohm resistor uh, in those two slots. Now, this is your negative, that's your positive. And, that, and then on the same one, I have the same thing set up here. Now, this little doodad right here is the Zener diode. I got it going from the negative in here, and then it comes into the side and it actually connects to the chassis over here. 
The Zener diode is about a 5 watt, 12 volt, so if uh, or 15 volt. So if anything ever happens to go wrong internally on that board and gets over 15 volts or 5 watts, it'll pop the Zener diode, which will allow the grounding for the DC to go to the AC case, which will automatically uh, short the unit out because they'll see both units off. And what happens then is the units just shut off. Uh, nice thing about that is I, I built one of these units before for a guy and he kept plugging it up wrong. If you do plug your powers up wrong over here, you will make it short, um, pop that Zener diode all the time. If you do it right, there's not an issue. So out of your regular power supply, I have it going from the negative, and then it comes over here, and that's the negative. And then I also have the um, positive runs right into the negative of the floating power supply, and then the positive coming in here. Both of them connected up, and I'm currently pulling 24 volts. So for a tw for a, you know instead of paying I don't know how many dollars for uh, 2,000 watt meanwhile that's $350, $400 um, I'm able to make the same thing they'll put out the same amount of power for some time, for some amount of time and effort for $26 I mean the biggest investment I'm going to be doing is I'll probably buy a case to put at it even if I buy one of those nice PRC cases from Progressive I'm still half the price of what the power supply is and this thing will do 1800 watts at 75 amps at one at uh, 24 volt. This thing is a beast. And can you really beat it for 26 bucks? This will allow my charger to do up here to do full 40 amps. 40 amps at six cells, um, all 3,300 milliamps. Uh, I'm looking right about a 2.01, 2.1 uh, C charge rate, which they can handle easy. I'm not pushing the packs, but it does hand out. It does help out. And one of the nice things also about this FMA charger here is that uh, unlike the other chargers on the market, whenever they charge and something's out of balance, they charge all the cells up, then bleed, the, bleed them out, then keep charging until all the cells reach the same level. So it takes a long time just to bring that one because they have to charge everything up just to try to get to that just try to get that one up and bleed all these down and bring this one up. With this one, it actually feeds forward. Basically what it means, it will charge through your balance cables to help. Um, so if one cell is lagging, it will actually feed current through your charge wire to bring it up faster, which will make them all, you know, your batteries, your balancing is your longest part of your charge cycle. So this will actually bring down your charge cycle. So uh, that's the basic information on this. Uh, there's a lot of technical information that goes into putting these together, just being careful, watching what you're doing, because um, you are dealing with a lot of power. But for anybody that's willing to take the time, look on the internet and read, $26 just got me 1800 watts of power at 24 volts which is capable to push this charger at 40 amps on my parallel charging and I've got, I can charge six cells in about 30 to 35 minutes so hope you like that review thanks